morning, everyone. I hope this finds you well and living your best life in Jesus Christ. Well, I'm sure you'll be surprised to learn we are in an election year. <laughs> yeah, right. And as you are no doubt aware, during this particular election year, no topic seems to be off limits for either side. Thanks to the advent of social media and 24-hour news, the mud is sing slinging so hard and fast it seems no one can get out of the way. And I don't know about you, but I'm tired of being caught in the crossfire. <laughs> I don't know about you, but every time I listen to the news, I just feel like I need a shower. And I can't seem to avoid it. It's everywhere. It seems to me that in this election, unlike any election I can remember, the vitriol seems more and more directed to Christians and Christian beliefs. We, as you know, we have a new nominee for the Supreme Court, Amy Comey Barrett, who is being barbecued in the news every day because she's pro-life and believes abortion is murder, which, by the way, it is. But she's not only being attacked because of this belief, but as one CNN broadcaster recently said, if she believes in all those Christian beliefs, how can she truly be unbiased? What? By the way, that same anchor went on to say that Christians believe in fantasies and that being a Christian should disqualify her and anyone who has similar beliefs from public office. <laughs> Wow. I, I couldn't help but be reminded of when the lady from The View, Joy Behar, criticized Vice President Mike Pence a few months ago. When she was told that he prays multiple times daily and that he talks to God, she says, well, in my book, people talking to God is a sign of mental illness. <laughs> well, Miss Behar, if talking to God is a sign of mental illness, call the men in white coats because God is alive, real, involved in our lives, and I and millions of Christians talk to him every day. And as for the CNN anchor who said that Christians believe in fantasies, I would counter that she will someday see the reality of Christ for herself. If anyone's living in a fantasy world, it would be these people who deny God and think that our lives and our actions have no eternal consequences. Look, the Bible is quite clear. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. I mean, it's sad and unfortunate as well as deadly for these folks to think that God's a myth and that somehow having a relationship with Christ is weird or strange. But, you know, that's not unusual. All the way back in Paul's time, it was the same way. He writes to the church in Corinth, in 1 Corinthians 1.18, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. I love that. The power of God. See, where the world sees foolishness, believers see power. Power to save. Power to heal. Power to free. Power to overcome. I don't know about you, but I like talking to God. And if I had a choice of having anyone to talk to, literally anyone, I'd choose God. It reminded me of a story about uh, Robert A. Cook, who was the president of King's College in New York. He was speaking many years ago uh, at the Bible, at the Moody Bible Institute. And during his speech, he was saying that the day before he had been in a gathering in Washington and had talked with what, who was then Vice President George Bush. And he went on to say that he later spoke briefly with President Ronald Reagan. Then he smiled broadly and said, but that's nothing. Today, I talk to God. Man, it's an honor to talk to famous people and people we admire, but how much greater an honor is it that the Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, ruler of all, perfect in holiness and righteousness, the one and only, completely, totally just, loving, merciful, omnipotent, and omnipresent God, hears our prayers, calls us his children, and cares for our every need. Am I the only one that wants to shout hallelujah? <laughs> I mean, let's face it, we often fail to give God the glory he deserves. So, you know, let's just make sure that when we pray our next prayer, let's keep in mind precisely who it is we're talking to. Look, I'm not political, but I would much rather have devout Christian brothers and sisters in places of power, people who talk to God and seek his will and listen to his voice, than those who live in this satanic fantasy world where Christ and God are just words and evil is defined as whatever they think is bad for them. 
So today I call on you to continue to pray for our president, our senators, our representatives, and our Supreme Court justices, that they are willing to bow the knee and acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord, no matter what party they claim to be from. Also, let us pray that they are not worldly wise, but rather godly wise, and that they seek his face in all things. Also, let us pray for all of our people in our nation because we're getting ready to transition into a new season, and it looks like it's not going to be pleasant. As for me, I'll be talking to the one in control and resting in that blessed assurance that one way or another, it's his will that will be done, no matter what. I hope you make today a terrific day, and I want you to know that I'm here if you need me, and I love you all.